Hey everybody, this is John Rollins. I'm here for our weekly Strive session. And today I am going to discuss with you uh, about our identity. I think we mentioned on last week that some of the things that we will talk about would be who we are, what we do, and how we can be the best version of ourselves. So today I want to talk about who we are, our identity. And I, if I can use a title for our session, and just again, we want to just keep this really informal, but the title is You Are a 10. You are a 10. And uh, you may remember back in, I think it was 1979, uh, according to the research, uh, there was a movie that came out and the, the title was 10, and it had Bo Derek in it, a romantic comedy movie. But um, I think from that movie, a lot of times we have looked to rate ourselves based on a number of characteristics. And so our question today is, how do you form your identity? How do you, how do you personally form your identity? Uh, many people form their identities by their family, you know, with their family. If you, uh, based on your last name, you walk around either with pride or with shame. You have a, a last name that others may recognize or that's associated with a high quality life. Then you walk around with your head high, you walk around with your shoulders back, your chest stuck out, and, and you walk around as if you deserve to capture or gain attention. You walk around and and so based on your family's name, that is your identity. And and we know that in the natural, our identity is determined by our parents, our, our DNA. Okay. But then there are so many other sources through which we form our identity. Some people identify themselves by their friends. If you are in the right circle, you are in the popular crowd. If you're not included in the popular crowd, then you may be another group. And so people identify themselves by their friends. I, I know that there are a lot of people who are part of a fraternities or sororities. And they have a, and I guess not a secret greeting because I've never been in one. But there's a way that they recognize each other and they connect with each other. And they form that identity. And, and they, 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 they walk around with pride. There are other people who who form their identity by their possessions, the things that they have or the things that they don't have. I, I am a car owner and I own a luxury model vehicle. And so I, I believe that through that, I, it identifies me as successful. I have a big house and, and you know, we have 4,000, 5,000 square feet. And, and we think that that identifies us as, as an achiever or as someone who's accomplished. Some people identify themselves by the clothes that they wear, the, the logo or the brands. Uh, they identify themselves by things that they possess or things that they don't possess. So if we don't have that house, if we live in a, in a part of the town where, where the, the homes aren't as big, then we, we are identified that way. Some people say on one side of the track or the other side of the track. Those are ways that we identify ourselves. Uh, there are other people who identify themselves by their profession. You are part of a professional group, a network, and you are a doctor, you are a lawyer, you are a law enforcement officer, you are a, a professional trainer, like my national, nationally recognized speaker. But, but you identify yourselves by your profession. And, and these are all areas or, or ways that people, they, 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 they recognize or they are recognized by, by some of those things. How, how many of you, Identify yourself by your decisions, things that you made, or your habits. You say, well, I, I'm a smoker, or I'm a drinker, or I'm an addict, or I'm whatever. I, I, I'm a person who, who's, I'm a convict, I'm a felon. By our decisions, or, or by our habits, by things that we did, or maybe by the responsibility that you have. I identify myself as a father, or as a pastor, or as a husband, or, or as a son. Um, maybe, maybe you identify yourself by your mistakes. Uh, I, I made a mistake in the past and I got in trouble for it. And, and now I, I 
when people ask me who am I, I use that description to to reveal myself. Uh, maybe use by your skills, things that you can do or things that you can't do. I can't drive, so I, I can't swim. I, I, I'm afraid of heights, your fears. We use so many things to identify ourselves. And, and how, do, how do you form your identity? In the next few weeks, there are gonna be several people who are going to identify themselves with a group of young men, a group of young women who all wear certain colors. And, and I think you know what I'm talking about. I'm a gator. I'm a Seminole, I'm a knight, I'm a, 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 a let's see, a bull, uh, I'm, a, I'm a bulldog. And we, we have these young men and young women who are out there representing our teams, they have certain colors, and, and people walk through the mall and they see your colors and, and go Gators, go Roll Tide, whatever. You know, and if I didn't call out your your school, you put your name in the comments. Let us know who you are and how you represent yourself. Uh, but there's there's so many ways where we gain our identity. Um, and then and then we have other people who give us an identity based on how they perceive us, how they perceive our performance. Maybe you've uh, competed and you had people to judge you. I, I think of the gymnast. I know that right now uh, Simone Biles is is is. I think she's just captured her her sixth national title, but she goes through the competition and, and she performs sometimes that she feels at her best and other times she feels that maybe she did something that wasn't at her best, but you have other people to come in and judge you. And, and through judging you, they are now creating your identity. You are a gold medal winner. You are a bronze medal winner. You are a, an alternate. You, you are Based, you're labeled based on somebody else's perception of how you performed, and so and then and here's how this thing works: in those competitions, you have normally multiple judges, and one person will give you a one score. Uh, maybe you get a, a nine point two five. Another person may perceive your performance; they saw something one person didn't see, and they gave you a, a nine point oh one. And one person gives you a, an 8.75, whatever the scores are. But what they do is they combine those scores and then they come up with your identity for that particular competition. What, what happens if, if one of them was distracted and or one of them had a, a, a different uh, a view or an angle and they missed something that really could make the difference between you winning this competition and you missing out by a few points. We are, we're evaluated, we are identified, we are labeled by imperfect people. All of us have our shortcomings and those imperfections sometimes are used or are considered when people are identifying us. I found out that many times when we are being identified or scored or judged or rated by other people, those individuals may also be rated or judged. Uh, that person who made it as a judge did so because in past performances, someone evaluated them and thought that they were a good fit, whereas one other person missed out just by the smallest of margins. We have imperfect people judging or rating us and they are creating our identity. And, and then here's the thing, we allow them to do so. Um, maybe, maybe I, I was thinking the other day, many times I think we, we have our identity, we treat our identity similar to, to someone who's going to a, uh, a buffet. And if you've ever been to a buffet and we're not gonna call out any names, but before you is a, is a wide selection of food and many times we'll go through and we'll look at something and say, I'll try that. That looks interesting. You know, what is that green stuff? Oh, oh, zucchini. Well, I've never had zucchini, but I'll try it. And you say, well, what is that yellow stuff? Oh, that's squash or kale or, or some kind of meat or whatever. But we go through and because things look interesting, they look attractive, they look appetizing, we try it on. I think a lot of people form their identities that way. They have a group of friends who do something and 
that it looks interesting to them, and so they try it. We have uh, job people on our job, coworkers, who they'll do something and it looks interesting to us, and then we'll try it. We have family members who offer us opportunities to explore different things, and we try some of that. And by picking up different things along the way, what we are doing is we're actually creating a, a set of things where people can identify us. But the problem is some people may like zucchini and other people may be allergic to zucchini. What are we saying? There's some things that we may try because it looks attractive, it looks tempting, but it actually may work out to our disadvantage. You are creating an identity based on a, a set of resources, a set of sources, but all of those sources are subject to change. If you are identified as a partner in a marriage, that marriage can change. If you are identified by a set of decisions, circumstances, those can change. Your job can change. Your house, your car, all of these things can change. And so if our identity is wrapped up in those things, then what's going to happen is when those things change, we lose who we are. We lose our identity. Well, I'm here to tell you that there is a place where we can get an identity that never changes. I wrote a book several years ago, and it was You Are Who God Says You Are. Let's try this side. You Are Who God Says You Are. And in that, I list several traits that are documented by scripture that helps us to form our identity. I said earlier that in the natural, our, our identity is determined by our parents, their DNA. But in the spiritual, our identity is determined by God. What does he say about us? So here are some of the things that God says about us in his scriptures, in the word of God. He says, you are loved. Yes, he says that you are precious. You are beautiful. You are valuable. These are traits that you can use to form your identity. He says that you are unique. You are blessed. You are his child. You are pure. He says that you are transformed. You are healed. You're not sick. Regardless of what the symptoms are, your identity is that of a person who's been healed. These are all things that are documented through scripture and they're from a source that does not change. So because he doesn't change, if we identify ourselves based on his truth, our identity doesn't have to change. Regardless of whatever unfortunate circumstances you may experience, that doesn't have to define who you are. I heard that two of the most powerful words in the English language is, I am. You can declare who you are based on the attributes that have been laid out for us through the Holy Scriptures. Or you can take on the attributes that someone else gives you. I encourage you to, to use the Holy Scriptures as the place where we find out who you are. And um, so there's the I am, and, and I was thinking, you know, it's, it's important for us to remember that those are some powerful words because when Moses asked God to tell him who he should tell the children of Israel sent him, he said, I am. He said, I am that I am. I am sent you. So obviously there is some power in those words. So two of the most powerful words, especially as it comes to when it comes to us identifying ourselves, I am. And then there's another set of words that people can use when we can choose whether or not to accept it. And that is you are. People can say you are something and then you have the option, you have the choice, you have the right to either accept or reject that statement. If people try to label you and you don't agree with it, you don't have to. You can reject it. So, and one of the things that you see on my shirt, and I'll show you my wristband, one of the messages that are included in the scriptures is you are who God says you are. And I say that God says that you are important. This is John with the Strive ser Series. Uh, I'm an assistant pastor at Jesus People Life Changing Church. And uh, we will be doing these sessions uh, over the next several weeks. I hope that you find something that that uh, that you can re relate to. And I hope that this is of some value. If you enjoyed it, I ask that you put some comments in the uh, section uh, in the section below. 
and then share it with a friend. Our intent is to try to keep these brief, about 15 minutes or, or, or less. We're going to try to meet every, maybe every Wednesday until, and just see how things are going. Again, this is a stride. These are strategies to remain informed, to remain victorious, to remain empowered. And uh, I think on tomorrow, maybe you will get a chance to hear something from Pastor Mingo. And so keep an eye out for that. And we'll see you next week if nothing happens. All right. I love you. God bless.